everything that we did last week, just because I have a little bit of Rachmanis on you. Uh, <clears throat> suffice it to say that the crux of what we debated last week was the meaning of V'eid Ein Ba, and we concluded by saying V'eid, the word aid means two witnesses. Two witnesses. The aid ein ba means that there weren't two witnesses, but there was one witness, right? There was one witness. So if one witness saw this woman engaged in sexual relationship with this man, the woman would be prohibited to her husband. She would not be allowed to drink the waters of the sota. Her husband has to divorce her. She loses her ksuba. She's not permitted to marry either her husband again or the other man. Uh, but she's not executed because in order to execute her, we would need two witnesses. Okay, so that was, and we went back and forth as to how we learned that. And we got a lot of blank stares last week. Um, in fact, I actually looked on the video, even my stare was blank last week. Um, but the idea, the idea, the bottom line is the aid ain ba means there weren't two witnesses implying there weren't two witnesses, but there was, there was one witness. Okay. So now the Gemara we're going to pick up after that, this today. Okay, so we're on Bayes, I'm at Bayes. Actually on 2B2. 2B2. Uh, by the two dots, which is going to take us to 2B3, basically. Okay, so what does the Gemara say? Says the Gemara. My taima de Rebbe Yehoshua. What is the rationale, what is the svara of Rebbe Yehoshua? When the Gemara asks the question, what is the svara of Rebbe Yehoshua? What Rebbe Yehoshua are they talking about? They're talking about the Rebbe Yehoshua back in the Mishnah. What did Rebbe Yehoshua say in the Mishnah? Remember, the Mishnah, there was a machlokus between Rebbe Eliezer and Rebbe Yehoshua, right? Two witnesses, two for, the witnesses for the morning and then two Okay, for the... so let's remember, there are three stages to what could be witnessed. Stage number one the warning. is the warning, what we call the kinui. Right. That needs to be witnessed by two individuals. Everybody seems to agree to that. Stage number two is the stira, seclusion. There, when it comes to the seclusion, there's a machlokes between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi, Rabbi Yehoshua. Rabbi Eliezer says you need two witnesses, right? Rabbi Yehoshua says you need one witness. Am I right? No. No? You have it in front of you? I don't know. Go back. What does the Mishnah say? I could have switched. I could have switched it around. Uh, Rabbi Yeshua says, "Mekana la pishtaim umashka al pishnayim." Right. All right. So Rabbi 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 Yeshua Rabbi Yeshua says you need two for both. And Rabbi Allah, I'm sorry. Rabbi Eliezer says, right. Rabbi Rabbi Eliezer says, two for for the warning. We'll start with Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer says. Two and one. Two yes. for the warning, one for the steerer. Rabbi Hoshua says two and two. Two for the warning and two for the steerer. Now, only if there are two for the warning and one for the steerer according to Rabbi Eliezer, or two for the warning and two for the steerer according to Rabbi Yoshua, but there are no witnesses, zero, <coughs> to the tuma, meaning to the sexual relationship that happened. What's the halacha? <coughs> That's the classic example of the sota. That's the cl classic example that she becomes forbidden to her husband as of that moment until the waters of the sota let us know whether or not she was, quote, defiled, whether or not she became tame, whether or not she engaged in sexual relationships with this man. So the Gemara now is asking the question, and the Gemara says, My time of the Rebbe Yeshua. What's the reason for Rebbe Yeshua? 
who says you need two witnesses for the stira. <laughs> What's the reason for Rabbi Yeshua saying that? Says the Gemara. Says the Gemara. Amar Kra, the Pasuk says, the aid ain ba. Right? The Pasuk says, the aid ain ba. Okay. okay? How did we translate the aid ain ba? That there were not two witnesses, ba. You knew, you knew, you knew what was going to happen, right? You know what's going to happen, right? That I, there. I, I should have taken a chance. Right? The aid ain't ba. Listen, if you had taken a chance, it would have had, had eight. Seven, right? right? You would have regretted it. The aid ain't ba. There were, there were, oh, there was only one witness, ba. Ba against her. So, how, how do we learn? What does that ba mean? Ba velo bikinui. How does Rebbe Yehoshua understand this? He says, the ain ain ba, ba comes to, ba comes to exclude something. What is ba coming to exclude? It's coming to exclude tuma and stira. Ba, the aid ain ba means there was, there weren't two witnesses, either the tuma or the stira. Right? So according to the way Rabbi Yeshua learns it, I need two witnesses for the Kinui, one witness for the Stira. What is that based on? Two and two. Rabbi Eliezer yes. is one, and Rabbi Yeshua is two and one. Right. Yeshua Rabbi Yeshua is two and two. Right. Rabbi Yeshua is two. Rabbi Yeshua says two and two, right? Rabbi Yeshua says two and two. So back to, so what does the Gemara say? Ba, what does Ba mean? Ba velo bikinui, ba velo bistira. I was, right? Meaning that what? That Rabbi Eliezer says the word Ba. Rabbi Yeshua says the word Ba. Rabbi Yeshua says the word Ba is coming to exclude. In other words, the word Ba means one witness. Right? The aid ain't Ba. There were not two witnesses regarding it. What is the it? According to Rabbi Yeshua, the it is only the sexual relationship between him and her. But anything other than that, meaning the stira or the kinui, they require two. That's Rabbi Yeshua's opinion. Rabbi Yeshua says the word ba is something exclusive, and that exclusivity only comes to exclude the sexual relationship. It does not come to exclude the stira, and it does not come to exclude the kinui. That's the aid ein ba. That is Rabbi Yoshua's position. Rabbi Eliezer's position. Rabbi Eliezer Omer ba velo bikinui. What does Rabbi Eliezer say? Rabbi Eliezer says the ba, the exclusivity of the ba, comes to exclude only the kinui, but not the stira. Somebody explain which you position is more logical. <laughs> why? It's Go ahead, why is it consistent? The law applies to either of the two events. First of all, you don't need, if you have two witnesses... You're saying Ba act, excludes both of them, that's what no, you're saying. Ba is, you need a, it, it applies <coughs> similarly to both requirements. Right? It, require, it applies to the Kinoi, it, it applies to the Stira, it doesn't have to apply to the act, because if you have two people witnessing the act, we don't need to go through this whole... Treatment. Even if you have one person witnessing the act, you don't have to go through the whole... I'm saying, so it's not, we're not talking about the act part about it. We're talking about the other two things that created the doubt. Right, so logically, it would seem that Rabbi Yoshua makes more sense by limiting Ba to the sexual act. Yes, sexual. Right? Limiting Ba to the sexual act and therefore excluding from the leniency of Ba, meaning one witness, excluding from that leniency everything else, everything else the Kinui and the Stira. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Eliezer comes along and Rabbi Eliezer says, no, the Ba, this leniency of the Ba, 
goes not only on the sexual act, but it also goes on the stira, on the seclusion. <coughs> meaning, meaning that it does not include the kinu, but it does include the stira. Given the malls and the small towns of that time, wouldn't it be, what the odds are that it would be easier for two witnesses to see them secluded and probably improbable for two witnesses to witness an act? It's just like, you know, what are the chances? It's not like, you know, when we walk around even today, it's not like we're walking around seeing people doing things like that. So why, if, you know, they would even be more cautious then. And I think that the odds of having two people see it would be almost impossible. But to see two people together, that we see all the time. Well, so that's secluded so, together. So I think, Michael, what you're so saying, but well, what you're what well, you're saying so makes a lot. In other words, what, so what I Michael is saying it. is, yeah. is that he can actually what what you're really saying. I think. I think I can it, see one and two more. I mean, two and two, and two and is one. nice, but but the two really you need it for the act more so. No, you need it for the conclusion. Well, well I mean, you're trying to discourage I know the women from being executed. Mm -hmm. right? right? But also from being right. alone. No, but if it's two, <coughs> two, 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 then it's an easy thing. It's a slam right. dunk. Two, two, two is a slam, slam right? Dunk. Two, 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 two she two gets killed, end right. of story. Right. Right. Two, 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 two is not, happening. I mean, right. but you know, we don't need any of this procedure. But we're basically saying two. By the way, two, 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 we do. We really need to, what if we just have two, the last two? We don't need the first two. That's correct. We. We don't need the first if Somebody two, witnesses a woman with another man. Yeah. Two of them, then she's dead or whatever, and that's the end of Wait, it. I thought she, I she didn't have to be warned. She didn't I have to be she warned. No. I mean, she has, she has to be warned by the witnesses right. that what you're about to do right. is exactly. commit that's adultery. She didn't have to be warned that's by not the kinui we're talking about here. Go ahead, Michael. Say, so say it again. So again, you're, you're, you're being warned. No, two witnesses have to hear the husband, hear the husband warn her right. regarding specifically right. Mr. So and so. Right. But even that is not as bad two people standing at the window as if two witnesses see her in the air. Mm -hmm. almost, impossible. <laughs> almost impossible what? For that to happen. How, how would they be able to yes, do correct. That? It would be very unusual for two, two witnesses to see the sexual act. Right. What Michael is saying is correct. Right? It would be very unusual for there to be two witnesses to see the sexual act, given the fact that obviously people are going to take precautions to make sure they're that seen. they're not seen. That's what this is all about, right? to make sure that they're not seen. So you're right. So, so let's take that out of the picture. Okay, so right? if you take that out of the picture... So we're left with the kinui and the stira. The only way you really know is the water. Uh, no, I, I understand what you're saying. Right. I understand that. The question that. is, do you have to have one person or two the, people? The question, we're, right, the question that we're dealing with is, what is that. the source of the machlokes between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua? Rabbi Eliezer says, you only need one witness for the seclusion, for the stira. <laughs> Rabbi Yoshua says, two no, witnesses. you need... Two witnesses for the stira. And if you have one person, it could be someone that's jealous. Yeah, that's the problem with one person. You, know, you live in a small town. Person, and right, exactly. I want to cause problems for my friends or for his And wife it could be the husband. And, and, well, somebody says it could be the husband, too. So, I mean, a husband who has two witnesses and warns his wife, he can now just say, oh, I saw her alone with someone. So. Right, but all that does is force the whole... Well, waters, it creates water. a lot of ill will right. Right. I mean, uh, in the two community as well. No, I mean, the two it's very disruptive. Right. You have to make sure that they both have the same details. Yeah, there's exactly. a lot really stronger there's proof right. on this too. Okay, so so like you're like you're all saying, it would seem that Rabbi Yehoshua's position is more logical. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbi Yehoshua's yeah. position yeah. that yeah. says yeah. that I require two for the kinui. And I require two for the stira, seems to be a more logical position. It avoids some of the issues of uh, collusion with the Russians or whatever else, <laughs> right? That would be avoided by having two witnesses for the kinui and two witnesses for the stira. Agreed. The Gemara, though, I mean, the Gemara comes to the same conclusion you come to, but the Gemara is not 
yeah, looking at it from a practical perspective. Yeah, the Gemara is looking at it from a semantic perspective. In other words, not just logic, but what in the verse would 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 seem to indicate this? In other words, what did Rebbe Yehoshua see in the verse, in the verse from the Torah, yeah. that's, that pushed him to say, two witnesses for the Kinui and two witnesses for the Stira. So the Gemara says, Rebbe Yehoshua focused on the word Ba. And so the word Ba, which technically means with, regarding her, and he translated it as regarding it, meaning regarding the, speci the specific case of the sexual relationship. The aid ain ba, meaning there was there's one witness regarding the sexual relationship. But that's the that's the limit of where one witness is effective. And therefore anything outside of that sexual relationship would require two people. It's the same conclusion you guys are reaching, but you're reaching it from a logical perspective. You know, what you're saying is it makes sense, and Rabbi Yoshua is saying, yes, I agree with you that it makes sense, but it's also hinted at in the wording of the Pasa. Well, speaking, why does Rabbi Yoshua have to explain anything at all? If two is normative Judaism, then if there's his point of view, his perspective is just the standard all the way through. So it's not really as yeah. who has to explain yourself exactly. to one. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of linguistics, then Eliezer should be going first. Eliezer should say, this is why I think it's one. And then Yoshua know, should be countering, this is why you're misreading the language. Of okay, two. so Eddie, there's actually a note that uh, deals with your oh, question. Okay. Note 28, I think. Yeah. Right. Note, note 28 <laughs> deals with your question. And we're going to come to it right now. Okay? And that is, how do we explain, when we understand how we explain Rebbe Eliezer's position, we'll understand why we needed to mention Rebbe Yehoshua's position. Right? In other words, why would Rebbe Eliezer say... One. Is enough for Stira. Correct. So one that, to say one is enough for the sexual relationship, no for Tuma, that I understand. The Pusuk tells me that. But why would Rabbi Eliezer say that one is also sufficient for the Stira? Okay. I'll tell you, psycholo from a psychological right. point of view, to save the marriage. Yeah, exactly. Because if one witness tells a husband, I saw your wife alone, alone mm -hmm. let's say, walking the dog with a neighbor, and I gave my, and I gave warning Careful. already. One witness, mm -hmm. okay? So now, the, now we can destroy the marriage. That right. And there's no By solution. having a mechanism of SOTA, right. that will then save the marriage. Right, exactly. If, 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 if Hoshua's opinion is taken, yeah. and one man comes along and says, I, there were two witnesses to the warning, and one guy comes along and says, I saw your wife with whoever the guy is, and they were secluded. We have no vehicle to force her to take yeah, the We just... We do what? We don't do anything. Yeah, but then... But then according, now, according to Rabbi Yoshua. According to Rabbi Yoshua. Yeah, so, 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 so now you have a husband and a wife who yeah, have distrust. Yes. Who, uh, well, so the husband... So in actuality, the husband and the wife had this trust before. No, no, no. Because, no, no. right? Because, no, no. because he, because he gave the kinui. There was something well, going on already. He was concerned. Well, he was, yeah, but obviously there was already some concern in his yeah, part. Yeah, but, right. right. but, 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 but now he's got a witness, witness. that says, after you told her not yeah. to be with so-and-so, she went with so-and-so. So now he's convinced. Right. But there's no way to prove that it happened or it didn't happen. If, if you say well, one witness is enough, we put her through this whole soda process. Either she admits it, and the whole thing is over, or she doesn't and drinks the water and she dies because she's guilty, or she doesn't die, in which case her husband has had proven to him that... The testimony of whoever saw them in seclusion, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And now they, now they have resolution. I mean, that's the whole point of this whole thing. So in other words, what, you're, mystical... what, so what you're saying is that if that the position of Rebbe Ezer is more logical even than the position of Rebbe Yehoshua. Yeah. 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 If right. the goal from is a, From a psychosocial point of view. Yeah, exactly. So psychosocial point of view. I didn't okay. That. Okay, good. I hear that. I, I hear that. Can you find anything... Remember, can you find anything in the Pasuk 
that would seem to support Rebbe Eliezer's position. Well, obviously the Gemara will. Obviously the Gemara will. <laughs> they're not going to go right. for the psychosocial stuff. No? They, wanna, they want the Pasa. No, no, listen, the Pasa. No, they agree with the psychosocial stuff. They but, just, you know, just but, how you get there is a little bit different. What the Gemara is actually no. going to say is... Doesn't the Pasha talk about sleeping together and Nistara? That's what the Pasha says. It doesn't mention the kingdom. Okay, let's talk. Right, right, right. The Gemara is a, the Gemara the Gemara is essentially. Okay, so you are juxtaposing those two together. In other words, right? You're saying that since since oh, since the pasuk puts them together. The implication is whatever applies to one applies to the other. Whatever applies to the Tuma would apply to the Stira. Let's look at the Gemara. That's precisely what the Gemara is going to say. In other words, what is the, so what is the Gemara? Well, let me just go back for a second before this to the note. Because Eddie asked, Eddie asked why, was it not, why would it not be more logical to say that... that why, why are we bothering to start with Rabbi Yoshua if two is the norm? Why don't we ask the question about Rabbi Eliezer, right? Because one seems to be out of the ordinary. So the note wants to suggest that actually you could make the logical argument, you could make the argument that one is more logical than two. Why? Because stira is the beginning of the kinui. I'm sorry, stira is the beginning of the tuma. In other words, in order for there to be Tuma, what does there have to be? There has to be Stira. Kinui is irrelevant for the Tuma, right? You can have Kinui and there can never be a Tuma. But if there's, a, but if there's going to be a Tuma, there has to be a Stira. So since Stira is the beginning of the process of Tuma, or since seclusion is the beginning of the process that leads to the sexual relationship, it makes sense, the note wants to suggest, that Rebbe Eliezer would say, just like one would be sufficient for the sexual relationship, so mm-hmm. one would also be sufficient for the stira, for the seclusion, which is the beginning, beginning of that sexual relationship. In other words, it's the stira is necessary to be in place in order for there to be the sexual relationship. They're not having the sexual relationship on Middle Neck Road. Right? There has to be, there has yeah, to be a stira. According to Rabbi Eliezer, one is sufficient. So well right? Wow. Okay. No, so, no. so the, okay, so the Gemara, the Gemara deals first with Rabbi Yoshua. Right? The Gemara deals first with Rabbi Yoshua and says, why 2-2? Two, two? The reason for 2-2 two, two is because the Pasuk says, Ba, limits it, limits it to the Tuma, and therefore anything which is outside of the Tuma requires 2. Right, which is either the, either the, which is both the stira and the kinui. Okay, what about Rebbe Rebbe Eliezer? What does Rebbe Eliezer say? So the Gemara says. The Gemara says Rebbe Eliezer says ba. How does he understand ba? Ba velo bikinui. Right, he does the same thing. Right, he says ba is limiting, but it limits itself to. Rather than just the Tuma, like Rebbe Yehoshua thought, it, he lim- it limits Ba, means the Tuma and the Stira. And the Gemara says, why? Says the Gemara. Uh, ba, right? So, the Ema Ba Velo Bestira, right? Why are, you, why are you excluding the Stira? In other words, why are you assuming that the Ba comes to exclude the Stira? Says the Gemara, Stira Iskash Lituma. That Stira, the reason is because Stira is connected to Tuma. Either the seclusion is connected to the sexual relationship. Either the seclusion is connected to the sexual relationship logically, right. meaning obviously if, going to, if there's going to be a sexual relationship, it has to take place within the confines of a seclusion. They're not going to be dumb enough to have... Uh, to have a sexual relationship in Central Park. So the sexual relationship needs to be within the seclusion confines. Or what the Gemara is now going to do is say 
that the Pasuk itself the language, yeah. connects them. The language of the Pasuk yeah. connects them. What's the language of the Pasuk that, that connects them? Dechse, because the Pasuk says, Vinistera vehi nitma'a. Right, that what? Vinistera vehi nitma'a puts those two words. Nistera, seclusion, vehi nitma'a, and the sexual relationship. The Pasuk actually puts those two words in close proximity. And since the Pasuk puts those two words in close proximity, we have what's called the Hekesh, meaning what applies to one applies to the other that is in close proximity to it. The Gemara now comes back and argues, wait a second. Also, Kinui Nami Iskash Lituma. We also have another place where Kinui is connected to Tuma. And where is that? The Pasuk says, Dirsev, Vikine es ishto vihi nitma'a. It's a little bit further away by like a word, right? But it's nevertheless in the same phrase, Vikine es ishto vihi nitma'a. Right? So, why don't we assume, why don't we assume that just as the Torah juxtaposes Stira and Tuma to say that you only need one witness for both of them. Why not assume that the Torah is juxtaposing Kina as well to the Tuma and say you should only need one witness for that as well? So says the Gemara, Vaha Miet Rahmana Ba. Right? That what happens? The Torah comes along to create an exclusion by saying the word ba. Ba means something is excluded. If I say one witness applies to everything, then nothing was excluded. The fact that it says ba is telling me something has to be excluded. Right? Yes, it happens to be absolutely true that the Torah juxtaposes the word stira to tuma. And it's also true that the Torah juxtaposes the word kinui to to tuma. However, we can't say both of them only require one witness, because if we say both of them only require one witness, then we're saying all three stages would only require one witness. There would be no exclusion. The word ba would not be exclusionary. And we know that ba has to come to exclude something. So since it needs to come to exclude something, what is the most logical thing that it should come to exclude? And that is kinui, right? So it says the Pasuk, Hamiet Rahmana Ba, right? The Torah comes to exclude something through the word Ba, right? Uma Ra'is Mistabra Stira Adifa. That the Stira is more preferable to exclude than the Kinui. Why? Says the Gemara, Shekane o sarta kitum'a. That what, what, what am I saying? Why is the stira more logical? Why is the stira more connected to the tuma than the kinui? In other words, I have to exclude something. So either I'm going to exclude the seclusion or I'm going to exclude the kinui. Kinui, the warning. I can't exclude both of them because if I exclude both of them, then Ba is not being exclusionary anymore. So the Gemara wants to say the stira, the, the seclusion, is more logical to be grouped together with the Tuma and the Kinui is more logical to be excluded. Why? So you can't have one, one, one. One for each of them. Why things. not? Because then there's nothing excluded. Correct. So if we know that, that defilement is one, right? Then by definition, we can't, we're not going to have one, two, one. Why not? We don't know that defilement is one. No, we do so know that defilement is. That was last week. The aid, aid, the aid, the aid, 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 aid right? Is one. Everybody agrees so defilement is one. It would make a lot of sense. One person for warning, then two people for seclusion, then one, one person for, for defilement. 
So the question is, is it 2, 2, 1, or 2, 1, 1? So again, what you're, right? saying, what you're saying is it's logical that, in other words, it's... But what it's the Gemara be, is asking... It's the, be, no, I know. For me, it's more logical for the... Which one is Sira closer to? The Kinoi or the Tuma? Which one is Tuma closer to? No, which one is Sira more, more related to? Because Tuma is definitely one. Correct. Okay. So one of the other two, Kinoi or Sira, has to have a requirement of two witnesses. Correct. Otherwise, there's no exclusion. Correct. Everybody agrees on two. Correct. And since everybody agrees that Kinoi has to be two... Well, no, but you can't work with that because that's already the conclusion. No, they started with Kinoi has to be two. I'm saying, but why? Okay, so if, but if you... I mean, it's right. It, it doesn't you're, make sense to have one person one warning, for the warning, two, two, two people for the stira, be, and then one person for the, for the tumor. Well, I can make because it. You're I, saying I can make an argument for that. But well, you're saying the stira and the tomb are more connected, so yes. they should be one. And Ultimately, one. so if, since it's, it starts with two, and it ends with one, the only question is whether the middle, in other words, two, two, one, <coughs> two, one, one. No, but why? But you're making the you're making the. Right. Hang on just a second. You're making the assumption that it starts with two. Right. The and Gemara is. Agree to that. You, that's what that's, learned yeah, but, correct, but that's already that's after this discussion. This discussion is taking place before. In other words, this discussion is saying everybody agrees that the tuma is one. Right. Now, everybody also agrees that stira right. and yeah. kinui both can't be one, because then there's no exclusion. Right. right. So the question so is, one of those, two, one has of those one. two has to be one. So you're saying, well, saying it's which not. One is the stira? So you're saying it's not logical to say one, two, one. Well, forgetting about logic, two things. First of all, the pasuk that says a <coughs> and only includes stira and tumor. It does not include kinu. And it's a pasuk. different pasuk. It's a different pasuk. Correct. It doesn't have the word eight ain ba in there. Dalit, there's no eight ain ba when it talks about kinu. connecting kinu, kinu and, and tumor. stira. Right. Or kinu, kinu and, and tumor. tumor. Right. There's, so there's no. So the eight ain ba clearly has to apply to tumor, and in that same sentence is stira, and stira and tumor are kind of sort of one slides into the other kind of a thing. So it makes sense to be two. Why can't why why can't you say that once we've established that tuma is one, so if kinui and tuma are connected together, but they're not let, connected together with the word with the concept of aid aim. But I don't need That's that. That's only in, in the words, of, yeah, I do. But I've already I've already in other words the aid aim how already. Do you, how do you take stira out when it's directly in the same pasuk that talks about aid aim? No, so. I hear you. The, well, you're right. The that but, says I, but I but I would argue <laughs> right, but I would I mean I well, could argue right? I, mean, I, <laughs> I could argue right I could argue and say, well, you know what? Look, Tuma, the Torah defines for us clearly that one is sufficient. In the same process that it talks about Stephen. I don't I don't ne I don't necessarily well, need it. to go No, that's true. That's true. But that's not how a how a uh, a heckish works, but a heckish works by by right by uh, proximity. Right. So both stira is proximate <coughs> to tuma, and kinui is proximate to tuma. Now the yes, tuma. you are. Yeah, I know, but stira and tuma, where they're proximate to each other, are also proximate to edeimba, huh? all in that same person. But we don't need that. That's that. We don't need that part. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to argue. I, 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 I mean, I'm trying to what? argue the other way. In other words, what I'm trying to say to you is, once we establish that tuma is one, right. then the eight ain ba is no longer relevant to me. So I don't care that stira is in the same pasuk as the eight ain ba. All I care about is what's in the same pasuk as tuma. Okay. Stira is in the same pasuk as tuma. And Kinui is in the same Pasuk as Tuma. So the Gemara is saying, well, I have a dilemma here. They're both in the same Pasuk as Tuma. You're saying, you're saying, well, maybe because Stira is in the same Pasuk as Tuma, which is in the same Pasuk as Ve'edeinba, that makes it more logical to say that Stira should be one witness. Right? Or I think maybe someone suggested even logically, how can you say that it would be one, two, one. Right. One, two, one doesn't seem to make sense. If anything, two, one, one right. seems to make sense. But you could even argue that one, two, one makes sense. In other words, what is, so Kinui, all right, that's the very beginning of the process. As long as there's one witness for that, that's fine, right? But now Stira, Stira's already a much more serious <coughs> business. 
because stira is already going to take us to the Beis Hamikdash. So maybe I would say, you know what, Kinui is fine with one, but stira I definitely needed two, two, right? So I could make the argument of one, two, one, but I just want I just want you to be able to hear to argue that other position as well, or at least to hear that other position as well. But the Gemara asks Rebbe Eliezer. And the Gemara says to Rebbe Eliezer, it's very nice that you're coming to exclude Kinui, but why are you coming to exclude Kinui? Right? Stira iskish lituma dechsivin nistra vahi nitma'a. Kinui nami iskash lituma dechsivin kine esishto vahi nitma'a. So says the Torah, ha mi eit rachman abad. One of these has to be excluded right. because of the phrase ba. Uma ra'is, and why did you see to, why you, Rabbi Eliezer, why did you see to exclude stira rather than excluding kinu? In other words, why is stira excluded from the requirement of two witnesses as opposed to kinui being excluded from the requirement of two witnesses? And Rabbi Eliezer will answer and will say, mistabra stira adifa shekain osarasa kituma. There is a similarity that stira that no no i'm sorry there's a similarity that stira and tuma bring to bring to each other what is that similarity if there are two witnesses or even one witness to the tuma what's the result um, let's uh, if there's one witness to the tuma what's the result of that the marriage is over. she's forbidden to she's her forbidden to her husband if there's if if there's one witness to the stira, what's the... She's forbidden, she's, right, has to go to the base of Mikdash, right. but, but she's she forbidden to her husband. husband. Right, so the Gemara wants to say, since in both of these cases, the outcome is the same, namely that she's forbidden to her husband, each of these cases only requires one, right? The similarity that the end result would be when I say end result, I don't mean the end end result, because in the case of one witness by stira, and no witnesses by tuma, it's not necessarily the end end result, but the more immediate result of both of these cases is that she is forbidden to her husband. So as a result of that, Rabbi Eliezer comes along and says, okay, kinui requires two. Why? Because we can't exclude everything. Kinui requires two, stira requires one, and of course, Tuma requires one based on the Pasuk. So that's the machlokis between Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Eliezer of our Mishnah, and that's the source of, of why they differ. Okay. So far, so good? Is the fact that you use the word Rachmana for Hashem, is this being particularly merciful for Rachmanas? The term Rachmana, it generally means Hashem or the Torah. We refer to the Torah as Rachmana. The English translates it as Hashem, right? The merciful, right? The merciful one. Is there anything particularly? Nothing particular. Well, I mean, is there anything particularly merciful about this? You could say. Yeah. As opposed to what? Rabbi Yoshua. Because only one aid for for allows this whole process of. Yeah, that was Soldier. what we said before. Otherwise, in other words, that's Rabbi not the Yoshua reason. Have, you have a real problem. Yeah, but what Eddie is asking is, is, is well, that the reason? Rahmana. Is that the reason why it says Rahmana okay. here? So the answer is no, because in multiple places in the Gemara, Kaddish Baruch Hu slash the Torah is referred to as Rahmana, okay. not specifically here. It's not like the no, 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 not and, and not not specifically here, it's, it's, and not for the reason, although the reason is makes sense that. Allowing or requiring only one witness for the stira is more conducive to getting this resolved than, without, you know, than, than just having the requirement of two witnesses in place. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Viter in the Gemara. So, what does the Gemara say now? So, we're clear with that, okay? <laughs> Says the Gemara, wait a second. It's very nice that the, that the most immediate result of the one witness for the Tuma and one witness for the Stira will be that she's forbidden for both. But Adaraba, Kinui Adif. I'm going to tell you better you should, right, exclude Kinui from the requirement of two witnesses. Why? Shekain Ikar Goram La. Right? What does it mean, Shekain Ikar Goram La? 
What? What the was? What? In other words, if there was not Kinui, in the first place. if there was not Kinui at all, what would happen? Nothing. 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 Seclusion would Gornished. In other words, if I, if two witnesses see a woman secluded with a man, what happens? Nothing. She doesn't get shlishi. That was a joke. <laughs> right? Nothing happens. Right? Right? Basically, nothing happens. Right? Right? Yeah, Joke, it, jokes it. don't happen at 10 to 10, I understand. <laughs> right? Basically, right? Basically, nothing happens, right? I mean, she gets a slap on the wrist, uh, you know, obviously maybe some kind of social repercussions, but, you know, she, she was guilty of being secluded with a married man, but we're not going to ask her. Does it have to be a married man? No, it doesn't need to be married. She's married. Right? She's married, right. She was guilty of being secluded with, with a man. Yeah. We're not going to answer her to her husband. We're not going to force her to drink the waters. We're not going to kill her. We're not going to do any of those things because it was not preceded with a kinui. So kinui, the Gemara wants to argue, kinui is really the thing that gets everything started here, right? Well, you don't need the kinui for for the act, right? Right, correct. Well, you don't even need the stira for the act. I'm saying, you know, that's what I mean. You don't need any of that. Right, right. So kinui adav shekain ikar garamla, right? It's it's the kinui that uh, you know sort of starts this whole process right. off. Ikar garamla. It is the it's it's the key that caused all of this to happen. And the Gemara says ilav um, ilav stira kinui mi ika, the ilav kinui stirui stira mamahani. Right. So, what is the Gemara saying here? You okay. Can't have either without the other. Right. It's the end of this whole thing. <laughs> right. A warning without seclusion has no consequence. Seclusion without a warning has no consequence. And therefore, what? And it's, it's just going round and round in circles here. And therefore, the so the what the Gemara so wants to say. Like better, what what the Gemara is coming back to say. What the Gemara is coming back to say is, okay, listen. The fact that one witness to Tuma would forbid her to her husband. <coughs> And one witness to Stira would forbid her to her husband until the waters are dr- are right. drunk. Drink. So the waters are consumed. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> until the waters are consumed. All right. Consumed, so yeah. since both of them, right, since both of them have the same immediate impact, we say one witness by either of them. And the fact that the Gemara wanted to say Kinui was more important because it started the whole thing. The Gemara basically answered and said, very nice, guess what? If there's no kinui, there's no stira. That's correct, if right? No stira, but if there's no stira, then the kinui is irrelevant. Right. So from that perspective, one is not more ikar than... Doesn't that suggest they should be treated the same? Well, that's, Rabbi, should, that's Rabbi Yahushua. That's Rabbi Yahushua's far. If you want to exclude, you exclude the one where one witness, you know, but it by itself is enough. Correct. Well, and so interestingly... Ron's question is, would one witness be enough for Tuma if this was not a situation of, sti- of Stira and Kinui? Let's, uh, let's say, right, let's say that there was no Kinui and there was no Stira. And one witness happened to walk in on them. And they're not secluded. Well, yeah, they're, they're well, secluded, but that one witness didn't know they were secluded. They just saw the tumor. Right? No, okay. The one the witness didn't know the seclusion. The one witness know. didn't see them secluded. There were no witnesses to the seclusion. There were no. There were. There was no kinui. Mm-hmm. There were no witnesses to the seclusion. Yes, they were secluded, but there were no witnesses to the seclusion. And one guy thinks he's going to the bathroom, and he makes a turn into the right off. The, he goes to the right door instead of the left door. Okay. Right, and when he goes to the right door, one the witness door. sees. Uh, some hanky panky going on, mm-hmm. all right. Is so is to kill her? is that it? Well, no, we certainly no. not enough to kill no, her. Not enough to kill her. Is that is that enough to forbid her to her husband? Yes. Yes. That's what yes. That's, yes. Oh, we said that last week, but that's in only because that's in the context of there were there Stira. were witnesses for Stira, and yeah. now the Tuma is. Happening, so it's sort of like piggybacking well, the on the same, witnesses of the one stira. Witness is enough. We just decided this is like Rabbi Eliezer that one witness is enough for stira. 
and one witness is enough for Tuma, can be the same one witness. So if you happen to skip the Stira part and just get to the Tuma part, you kind of witness. No, the... but that's all dependent on there being kinui. Right, that's all. Kinui. That's all dependent on the, when, when Rabbi Eliezer says one witness for Stira and one witness for Tuma. That's after there are two witnesses for Kinui. If there's never a Kinui, okay. there's no Kinui. There is, but there's one witness for Stira and one witness for and Tuma. Just one, or just one witness for Tuma. Right? Sure. With just one witness for Tuma, is that enough to forbid her to her husband? Now, logically, it would seem to be enough, right? right. Mm -hmm. In other words, logically, it would seem to be enough. But halachically, is it enough or not? Well, is there any other... A halakhic event in the Torah, we, we, what would this suffice? That's just the, that's the question. Is there any other... Um, without, uh, like, pre Yeah, just, just one way. Without any build -up. Yes. So without any... Yes. So when Pinchas killed Zimri and... Um, Cosby. Cosby. And then was, that was public. I mean, he just went ahead and did it. I know it was witnessed and... I guess, it, I guess everyone witnessed it, or was it just yeah. he who witnessed it? Well, everyone, witnessed, everyone witnessed the stira. Right, but yeah. He was the only one who actually saw the tuma, but one, right. everybody witnessed the, everyone witnessed the stira. The stira was no in warning. front of everyone. I mean, there's no formal warning. I mean, that was the just act, that was different. Right. right. Yeah, wasn't right. the best type of thing. But doesn't the best knowledge require right. to witness? So we're going to have to, you know, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, grapple we'll grapple with this as we move ahead. Mm -hmm. But so far it seems that, remember, the one witness for the Tuma is because, as we pointed out here, yeah, it's connected prior. to the and two the prior witness. events yeah, the where, there was, yeah. where there was where there was one witness yeah. and two witnesses or two witnesses and two witnesses. Yeah. So depending upon how we... Depending upon how we look at it, that's going to explain, you know, it, what if there were, if there was no Kinui and there was no Stira, what would happen? Uh, we'll stop here for today and we'll pick up from here next week. Yashar Koach, thank you all very much. We don't need to daven Mariv. But, uh, what? Oh, you know what? We do need to, we can daven Mariv.